everyone. Welcome to the show. My guest today is a professor at the University of British Columbia, and um, that's all I know about him. But hey, it's a good start. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen Tom Schultz. Welcome to the Hi. show, Tom. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, let me just try and turn off some of these things that go beep. Oh, yeah, I hear that. Notifications and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, I'm so pleased. So what do you teach? What's your I teach in the Department of Theater and Film. So I teach acting and directing to folks on both the theater and film side of the spectrum. Oh, and so I also cool. teach some courses in applied theater. So things like the theater of the oppressed and using theater as a means of community building, education mm. and activism. So what made you decide to get into that career? Wow, you know, since I was six years old, I wanted to be an actor. It was just, uh, some people find it late. I, there's a couple of key things. One, my parents took me to a production of Dracula at the Bathurst Street Theater in Toronto when I was a kid. Okay. And those of you who know Dracula will remember the character of Renfield, who is Dracula's insane assistant. And they had the character run up through the audience in a fit of madness that terrified all the kids in the audience. And right, I said, that's what I want to do. And then the other the other key moment was folks uh, around our age will remember the original version of the Bad News Bears, right? The film about the baseball team. Yes. When I saw that and saw a bunch of kids who were not much different from my age at the time, and I realized that that was their job. As soon as I realized you could do that as your job, I was like, well, what else? What other job would you want? So that's sort of the origins of it. OK, so did you get into acting? Yeah, so um, I started off um, with a children's theater group in Scarborough, Ontario, a suburb of Toronto where I grew up called the Jester's Children's Theater. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to go to a school of the performing arts for high school, Etobicoke School of the Arts. So I had a very intensive drama experience in high school. And then I came out to UBC and did the BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts and Acting program that I now teach in. And then, yeah, I've had a career in stage and television and film and, and various things that I continue to do alongside my teaching. That's that's exciting. I find it very exciting to be doing that. Yeah, 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 it's so, been great. Yeah, it must be awesome, I would think, like when you're teaching and or if you've got, like, do you put on plays? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when yeah. you, it must be exciting for you when there's somebody that just stands out. Oh, that is, yes. Um, and you know, we, it's a competitive program. So we, you know, we, we audition over hundred people and we usually take between 14 and 16 into a class. So we've already sort of looked for the ones that we think are showing some kind of promise. And then to see them blossom over the course of the training is, is amazing. And, and they all grow, you know, there's ones, you know, where you have different ideas and, but it's also can be very hard to predict who's going to quote unquote, make it and who doesn't. Right. I mean, right, yeah. you've been proven right and wrong and. But we really invest in all of our students. And the most important thing is that that we see them all grow over the right. course of that time. Yeah. Yeah. I took some acting classes and I remember there was a there was a young girl there. I'm a, I'm a late bloomer, but there was a young girl there that she just stood out, but she had zero confidence in herself. Mm. And it was the saddest thing. I don't think she continued, but it's just like we tried to tell her, like, what you have something special that the rest of us in the in the class just don't have. Yeah. You know, it's one of those people that when you watch, you don't even care what they're saying. Yes. It's so drawn in. Yeah, just that natural presence, which is something you can't teach, right? So yeah, yeah. acting is a temperament as well as a set of skills, right? That you, yeah. you and it's there comes from that that you either have to have incredible self confidence or incredible powers of denial <laughs> to be <laughs> able to just go up there and say, yeah, no, this is me, and uh, you should watch. <laughs> unfortunately i did not either <laughs> right <laughs> i'm doing this instead yeah. uh yeah so so tell me about some of the plays that you put on well are you interested more in the ones i've done at the university or things i've been in Bo oh things that you've been in let's start there so um one of my favorite shows ever was a few years back um more than a few now uh i was in a production of the play absurd person singular by alan akeborn great british uh, uh com comedic uh dramatic comedy writer uh, that was directed by Vancouver's beloved Bernard Cuffling. And uh, that was a role I really loved because I got to show uh, the play takes place over the course of three Christmases in three different years. Oh, nice. And to show the growth of the character, the development of the character of these three sort of snapshots of Christmases, how the character changes. That was a great acting challenge. Uh, I got to play the title role in George Bernard Shaw's The Philanderer, also at the Arts Club Stanley. 
Um, I've worked for smaller companies like um, uh, Ruby Slippers and uh, who else? I, you know, theater replacement. So yeah, it's been a fun mix. And then TV and film, you know, I've, I spent a lot of my career really focusing on independent local films. I made a number of films with a director named Bruce Sweeney back in the 90s. And, uh, and then some of the TV shows, you know, The X-Files and Stargate and some of the ones that uh, are, people know for shooting here. Right. So yeah, it's been it's been a varied uh, it's been a varied run. Um, in mm -hmm. terms of stuff, putting on stuff, I had a great time uh, a number of years back directing a play by a local playwright Sally Clark. Uh, she wrote an adaptation of Franz Kafka's The Trial. She created a play called The Trial of Judith Kay, and I had a terrific time directing that. Sally is a playwright I really admire, and have had a chance to be in um, one of her plays in the past too. And um, I got the greatest compliment of my career, which was not whether or not reviewers liked it or whoever liked it but a playwright saying to me you captured what exactly what i was after awesome. and that to me that was that's yes. among the top three most satisfying moments of my yeah. career for sure awesome now yeah. now as you're teaching are you still active in the yeah yeah business? so how it works for professors in our field you know so a professor in a more traditional academic field would be expected to write articles and books and that would be the research component of their work that's how they'd get promoted and tenured and for us in the creating and performing arts we're expected to just keep making art so yeah it's been actually uh i haven't had to say please can i still like have an active career it was expected of me that i would continue to do that they also want to make sure that you know who's ever in the classroom teaching uh has still has their you know their knife is still sharp so yeah. to speak right they're still keeping uh you don't want it to be too long since you've been under the pressure of performance yourself mm -hmm. if you're going to teach actors so when you when you're um, deciding on uh what what criteria do you use for when you're teaching for your classes that you're teaching mm -hmm. on what you're going to perform what play you're going to choose yeah that's that's a great question so um you know as much as possible to try and find material that it, it, that the age range is of course you know in theater school you can get away with you know age makeup and a wig or whatever but really we want to give the the students the opportunity to play from their own age range mm -hmm. and um and that's a quality script uh and in terms of the actors that we have is it going to stretch them are they going to do different types of plays at different times so they get a, a feel for different styles and then, you know, uh, something that we haven't always done a great job of, but that we are trying to do better, of course, is, is you know, diversity and inclusion. Are we able to find works that are not all coming from a white Eurocentric kind of place mm -hmm. and that have opportunities for um, uh, actors uh, from different backgrounds to be yes. able to play characters that authentically reflect their identity rather than saying, well, we're all going to just pretend we're white yeah, and yeah. do, you know, Nice. X play that we've always done. It's mm -hmm. a challenge because our cohorts are so mixed to find the right plays that can capture all of that. Yes. It's an ongoing challenge, but it's obviously a challenge worth uh, taking on because it's a, it's an important place where our our work and the and the whole theater world is is really trying to grow in that direction right now. Yeah. And of course, it's mm -hmm. long overdue. How long have you been teaching? I've been there, believe it or not, for eighteen years. I've been there oh my! Oh, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's been a while. So you must be doing something right. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, they haven't uh, chased me out of there yet, but uh, yeah. And I'm having a great time at the moment uh, teaching a class where we create actually a feature film from scratch. We oh, use wow. improvisational methods and then we shoot it's a very you no know, micro budget film. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's sort of raw. It's, you know, um, very much sort of indie guerrilla kind of cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have a, a fantastic group of young actors working with me right now that have been such a joy. And so I'm, uh, you know, 18 years later, I'm I'm having the time of my life right now. So it's not the best thing eh, to do oh, something yeah. you absolutely enjoy. Yeah. I still, after all these years, sometimes have moments where I think I, they're actually paying me to do this. Like, because I'm having so much fun. It doesn't seem yes. right that I also get paid. <laughs> yeah. So now have have any of your student, students gone on to do really good things? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a proud tradition of UBC grads from before I ever got there and continuing. Uh, just at Bard on the Beach this summer, uh, Gazal Azerbad, who played Juliet in the Romeo and Juliet as one of our grads, and Ishan Sandu, who played Paris in that production as one of our grads. And over in the other big tent at Bard, uh, I believe it was Hermia, is played by um, one of our former students. Uh, Heidi DeMaio um, and uh, someone else was in that 
cat, uh, Karthik, uh, uh, an actor named Karthik, who was played a number of roles. So we're well represented at Bard, also on the design side as well. A lot of our design students, and in television, there's a for instance, just as an example, there's a series called uh, what is it called? Moonshine, that mm -hmm. is on CBC. It did its first season last season. I think it's coming back for another season. And Anastasia Phillips, one of our grads, is one of the main characters on that show. So. You'll see us around. We're 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 dotted here and there, both obviously very much in Vancouver, but across the country as well. Very good. So, how many productions do you put on a year? We tend to put these days. The main stage season is usually three sort of larger productions, and then there's a bunch of smaller shows. There's usually you know three or four um, smaller productions as well in our studio theater. So they're always in your studio at this. Yeah, they're always on campus. Yeah, there's the Frederick Wood Theater is our big main stage. We also do shows in the TELUS Studio Theater, which is in the Chance Center for the Performing Arts. And then we have a small um, a black box space called the Dorothy Somerset Studio, named after the our very first department head way back in, in the 1950s, I guess, mm -hmm. and early 60s. Um, yeah, so those are the spaces we use primarily. So what do you have coming up? Well, we have a very interesting season coming up. Uh, so after I finish this film, these students who hopefully I won't have it completely exhausted go into rehearsal for a production uh, of a Parliament of the of Birds, a Parliament of the Birds, which is an adaptation of an old Sufi uh, poem. Speaking of trying to get you know representation from from uh, the culture, many of the cultures that make up Vancouver. So a, a Persian source material uh, adapted by the well-known play, playwright Guillermo Verdecchia and directed by Kamiar Chai who was one of the co-founders of New World Theatre, which has been a very important company here in, in Vancouver. Uh, and then our whole season has a kind of animal theme to it. We have two bird-related plays. We have A Parliament of the Birds. Then we have The Birds, um, uh, based on the old Greek play, but uh, through uh, an indigenous lens, actually, adapted by the indigenous playwright Yvette Nolan and uh, directed by one of our MFA uh, candidates, um, Michelle Olson, who is a, 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 a an indigenous uh, theater maker, and um, then we've got a play called Wolves, which is about a girls' soccer team, uh, directed by our my colleague Leora Morris, who's our newest member of our of our acting directing faculty and is a fantastic uh, talent. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's our lineup. It's an like I say, it's an animal theme, uh, but. Uh, using the sort of metaphorical world of animals to explore a lot of contemporary issues. Cool, cool. Now, I've done some student films in the past, and I'm just wondering if it's the same thing where they would have, like, not only the actors, but they had uh, the makeup people. And, like, do you, ha do you have all of that? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, you make, we don't have makeup programs. Usually there's, we. I mean, I think there's there's great makeup programs here in town at places like Vancouver Film School and elsewhere. Yes. But yeah, there's a the student films, uh, our BFA film production class, they'll make their their short films um, in their third and fourth years. And yeah, it'll be a full crew and they're learning all the different roles from, you know, being in the camera department, you know, gaffing and electric and sound department and all of that. So yeah, we have our, our crews uh, there. It's still early in the year yet. They're they're polishing yeah. off their scripts and, and getting ready to move into shooting, but it won't be long before they'll start turning up in places all over the city. Yeah, oh my gosh, I'm just, I just think about, like, I feel excited just just thinking about it, so I can imagine how it is for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like on yeah, both it's... both ends, whether it's your, your acting roles or TV, whatever it is, and then the, you're teaching, so it must be so yeah. much, so enjoyable, yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing thing to have as your as your full time job. Uh, I gotta yeah. say, I, I pinch myself every day. <laughs> and it just to imagine, like again, to see that 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 raw talent, mm. and then just uh, you know, you help them grow and and uh, explore yeah. what they can and cannot do, right? Yeah, it is wonderful. Uh, also, because you know, as people, anyone who's taken a theater class knows, you, you do some strange things sometimes in theater class, and so to be reassured that it is actually working, we're not just doing a bunch of weird stuff. Yes. To see them from first year into fourth year, and to see the growth, and go, you know, there actually is a method to this madness. You know, there really is uh, some principles of training actors that 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 have consistently worked and we're always looking to keep developing and finding new things and bringing in new voices that we haven't heard but it is it's so gratifying to see them grow and to see them yeah. flourish in whatever career they they end up in whether they whether they sort of take off into 
stardom, uh, whatever mm -hmm. that means, or whether they end up behind the camera or behind the scenes, or in a in a complete. We have you know many of the city's finest high school drama teachers have come through our program and then gone on to education. So our grads are impacting the cultural life of the city in all kinds of different ways. So now, uh, with it, uh, like you said, you've been teaching for 18 years there. You've been there for 18 years. Is there something that you, you haven't done yet that you really want to do? Mm. Well, I mean, there's so many. I, I, okay. I, took, a, I took a stab at adapting a, a, an old German play called Wojciech years ago. Uh, and I have an idea for this sort of science fiction kind of adaptation of the play. Yeah. We did a version of it, like my first attempt at trying to do it uh, back in around 2007, I think it was. And I was really pleased and the students were incredible. I mean, they really jumped into a very experimental and strange idea and went with it. Um, and I feel like there's still more work to do on that. So finding the right time and place to go back to that project, I still feel like I haven't quite found um, the way it's supposed to really play out. So at some point, I want to get back to that project. Yeah, sounds exciting. Well, we're, on that note, we're going to end it there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just stay on camera. This has been really enjoyable, by the way. I, I really, I really like that, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, just because of your enthusiasm for what you do is, is uh, contagious. So I really like yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm blessed. I like to try and... Yeah, that's cool. Job. Yeah. And to the audience, thank you so much uh, for watching. You. This has been uh, Tom Schultz, a professor at the University of British Columbia. And um, I'm sure you can find some of the work. Well, how, how would somebody go? Like, where would they find? Like, um, they well, something? I mean, there's I have an IMDb page if you go to Internet Movie Database. And then um, I know one film that I one of the local films I did that's not that hard to find. There's a film. Uh, under the title Hoser, H-O-S-E-R, which wasn't the original title, but when uh, American distributors bought it, they changed the title to something they thought Americans would recognize as being distinctly Canadian. But I know you can find that on Apple TV. Okay. Um, and then, you know, um, I don't know, I'll show up on your reruns at some point, Stargate, <laughs> X-Files, I'll be around, yes. yeah. Nice. Okay, thanks. And thank you, everybody, for watching the show. And remember to be nice and uh, be so to everyone. <laughs> A sense of community to the wax a place to be. A sense of community when you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chill a wax a place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark, chill a wax a place to be, you'll see.